Good afternoon, Chairman. I can confirm it is just after four o'clock. The live stream has commenced and we are ready to start the meeting. Good afternoon and welcome to the development control meeting for the 28th of October 2020. I'd like to advise that today we'll be using Zoom to provide a live stream to members of the public. Please can we ask that you bear with us as we are dealing with numerous internet connections and sometimes this can but cause a slight delay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Sammy Winter will be your Zoom host for today. Gordon Sutherland and Rob Tate will be the officers presenting during the meeting. We have IT support on hand if required and Sammy Winter will be clerking the meeting today. During the meeting, all participants except for the Chairman will be muted and this should remain during the whole of the meeting unless you have asked to speak. May I take this opportunity to remind members that all members are invited to participate in the meeting, but would ask that you use the raise hand facility, which can be found at the bottom of the participant screen, should you wish to speak on any matter. The chairman will be notified of your request and he will then invite you forward to speak. Once you have been called to speak, please could we ask you to unmute yourself and then once spoken, mute yourself again. When asking a question, please could we ask members to refer to page numbers within the report for ease to officers where possible. If we need to adjourn the meeting, the chairman will advise of this and the anticipated length of adjournment. When voting on an application today, this will be undertaken by a roll call of members present. Once your name is called, please unmute yourself and respond accordingly. When confirming the minutes today, chairman, there are no minutes today, so I don't need to read that part out, but they will be confirmed on assent, but there are no minutes today. And members can only partake in voting on an application if they have been present for the entire discussion on the application. Chairman, if I could just undertake a roll call of members present. Councillor Anderson. Present. Councillor Bird. Present. Thank you. Councillor Fairhead. Present. Thank you. Councillor Flaxman Taylor. Present. Councillor Freeman. Present. Councillor Hammond. Present. Councillor Lorne. Councillor Lorne, you're Present. unmuted, thank you. Councillor Mogford. Present. We have apologies from Councillor Myers today, Chairman. Councillor Wainwright. Present. Councillor Williamson. Present. Thank you, Councillor Tony Wright. Present. Councillor Barbara Wright. Present. Thank you. Chairman, I can confirm officers present in today's meeting. We have Caroline Watling, Monitoring Officer, Gordon Sutherland, Senior Planning Officer, Rob Tate, Planning Officer, and myself, Sammy Wintel, Corporate Services Manager. Members, I can confirm that we have external participants who have joined the meeting today to discuss the planning applications to be considered. Any external attendees will be called forward to speak at the appropriate time and will remain as attendees during the meeting. External attendees are only to speak when called forward and to confirm there will be no entitlement for any external questions. To confirm that we have ward councillors in attendance today, we have Councillor Thompson and Councillor Carl Smith attending today's meeting to speak on particular items. These members will not partake in voting at today's meeting. Chairman, we can now start the agenda items. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to welcome Senior Planning Officer Gordon Sutherland um, to the committee today. Um, so we now move on to uh, item number one. Um, I know we've got Councillor Myers is absent. Is there anybody else, Sammy? Apologies, no? No, just apologies from Councillor Myers, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, item number two, have we any declarations of interest, please? Yes, Mr Chairman, under item five, I do know uh, Peter Saunders. Okay, yep. Anybody else, please? No more hands raised, Chairman. Okay then, uh, so we now move to item number three, uh, which is is uh, the application for uh, Pound Lane, uh, land west of Philby. Sorry, Chairman, I think we've just lost Councillor Lawn. Just bear with me, I'll just see if I can get him back into the meeting.
Chairman, it would seem we have a little bit of a network issue there. We had lost people and we have got people back. We haven't, however, got Councillor Lorne back. If we're happy to proceed, obviously Councillor yep. Lorne won't be able to vote on this application as he won't be present for the entire me uh, for the entire item. But I will try to get IT to get yep. him back on now. But if you're happy to proceed, we can proceed. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so, yes, uh, we move to uh, item number three, uh, which is the application for uh, Pound Lane uh, Philby, and that is with uh, Planning Officer Rob Tate, I believe. Hey, Chair, thank you, Sammy. Can you both you. hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Yeah, excellent. I will get going with the presentation then. Thank Bye. you. Nearly there. Excellent. So, okay, so this application for Pound Lane Philby is for 15 houses, including three affordable units, an attenuation lagoon, and a footpath down to Main Road. It is a full application. If we just start by looking at the site in its context, really. So, the site is situated within this triangular field here, and is the southern part of the field outlined in red. This map, you can also see the existing development. So this is main road running down this, to the bottom along the south here. So to the west, we have like the post office and the other amenities to that direction. To the east, you go past the pub onwards towards Caister and Philby Heath. So the, also on this map, you can see quite nicely the contour lines. So the high point of this field is here towards the top right-hand corner, and then it falls away towards this curved edge here. So this is a satellite photo, just really expanding on that. Here we have the junction main road, Pound Lane. The access is through this existing field access here. There's also a water course which runs from the east along the southwest boundary of the south, along the north towards the broads. So here is just the most recent outline of the site. So you can see the mix of development here. We have the three affordable units down in the eastern corner of the site. Here is the attenuation lagoon and a 10 metre buffer to the existing boundaries of the properties. The access is between the two bungalows, so 16 and 17 pound lane, and these bungalows are occupied by over 55s. There is also proposed to be a public footpath which will run down and then cross over towards the junction of Pound Lane, which I'll come on to a bit later on. Also, there's going to proposed to be a public footpath which will go around the lagoon, joining up to the other site, allowing for public access through the development. Here's just a better zoomed in picture. So you can see some of the planting which is going to be proposed. Also, this helps to give you a better understanding of how the, develop, the development is spread out. So you can see the affordable units down here moving along. There's quite a mix of properties and there is the development isn't repeated. So it's quite a regular, which, quite, which adds to the um, street scene. So this is the other part of that zoomed in map. You can see a pumping station and the easement around the side and then the turning head up here as well. So as you can see the site is located outside of the village development limits although you can see it's adjoining the limits on this eastern corner and then along the southern portion as well. Members will be well aware of our current five-year housing land supply position and I will explore this later on within the report. So if we just go through some of the house types, these are all detailed on page six of your committee report, but this just gives you a better visualisation of what is proposed and the mix that there will be. So there are quite a few different housing types here, as we can see as we go through. These are the affordable units here, so it's going to be a terrace down in that eastern corner, as I mentioned before. So the one bed unit is located in the middle, and then the two two bed units either side. There are some interesting features like this two bedroom property has a jutted out feature at the top, which adds to the, um, to the mix of development as well. There are also the details of the garages supplied as well. Also submitted are the materials 
which will be proposed. So we've got multi-bricks, pan tiles, render. And then if we move on to have a look around the site, just to give you a better understanding, this was taken earlier on in the year, obviously when it was a lot nicer and sunny. So this is the access between 16 and 17 pound lane. It's the existing field access, as you can see, it's been used. And then if we move on to some more recent photos, so I went outside so on Friday, you can see the existing field. And I think you can also see from this photo the, how the land falls away towards this southern portion of the site here as well. So you can see the existing state of the field. Again, this is the properties which front onto main road along the southern portion of the site. And then these are the trees, which I think are referenced in the arboriculturalist section in the report for you. This is walking along the eastern boundary of the site, along where the footpath will be. The entrance is just up here, along here. And then these are the bungalows, which I mentioned earlier. Again, this is the same view, just a bit further down. So then this is where standing in that southern, southeastern corner of the site. The curved portion is here. The water course runs along the site here. These are the existing trees, which won't be impacted by the development. This is the lowest portion, obviously, down by the site here. And then the attenuation lagoon will be just to the north of this section here as well. Again, this is, it's not really very clear on this photo, but I think this photo shows it a bit better. This is the existing water course. Gives you a bit of an idea of the existing level what is in the water course. Obviously I went on Friday, it was raining at the time I was going. It hasn't obviously been the most extreme weather event at the time, but I think it does give you a bit of an understanding of what the context is down the southern portion of the site as well. Again, this is just looking back towards the entrance here with the people with the bungalows along the side. And you can also see the elevation, how it rises towards that corner as well. Again, this quite it's useful to see the elevation, how it slopes down. This is looking along that southern boundary, the, ba the boundary of the properties along Main Road backing onto here. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of um, shielding from those properties by way of either fencing or landscaping. Again, there's that watercourse that I mentioned earlier. Looking back towards the field, the entrance. So you can see the entrance is just through there and then the bungalows again. These are some of the trees which I mentioned earlier alongside the watercourse. As it says in the report, they won't be impacted by this development. This is just to show you the existing bungalows facilities and some of their communal areas as well at the back. This is then looking back from the entrance along that southern boundary. And as you can see, most of the properties along here have some form of shielding, apart from this property here, which is set back quite significantly further than the other properties along Main Road. This is then looking from the entrance to the site back onto Pound Lane and you can see where the existing roadway will be and then the footpath will run along this side and then go down to Main Road. This is then looking up Main, oh, <laughs> up Pound Lane, beg my pardon, towards where you'd go towards Ormsby and the back roads that way. And this is obviously the same photo as before, but a more recent photo showing the entrance of the site and the context and the surroundings around it. You can also see quite clearly, I think I detail it later on in the report, the existing provision of hedging on this side and then some additional hedging is proposed to be on the northern side of the access. Looking down Pound Lane towards Main Road, you can see where, where the footpath will be on this side and I've got a more detailed plan of this later on. And then as we walk down, you can see how the road narrows towards the Pound Lane Junction. And then this is where the footpath would cross over and then run along this side of the road. This is, you'll see it in the, um, the highways comments, how he mentioned about the tree roots and the moving of the telegraph pole. I think this just gives you a better understanding of the current situation and what will need to be done here. This is the um, pumping station, I believe. And then as we move down, you can see the ex an existing um, water attenuation ditch here, which is upstream of the proposal. And then the junction here in the background. I apologize that this is a bit of a blurry shot. This is kind of a bit of a motion shot, if you like, but this shows the existing width of the road and two vehicles passing. And then the vehicle at the end turning at the bottom of the junction. This is then looking back up Pound Lane towards the site up in the distance with the ditch here as well. Just giving you a better understanding of the whole junction 
and then some more pictures here looking towards the post office and Philby Bridge in that direction and then looking towards Caister in this direction. So this just gives you an understanding of the existing highways boundary when we move on to talk about the footpath I think this will become more clear and then this isn't the clearest plan but it shows you how the footpath will run down this side of the road before crossing over to this side. And here are just some of the dimensions to show you the width here. And as you can see, it does narrow to 4.8 meters. But as we'll discuss later on, when we talk about the highways concerns, these can be dealt with. These concerns can be dealt with by way of condition. This is just a diagram to give you an understanding of what is proposed surface water drainage wise. Obviously, you can see the water coming down here into the attenua attenuation lagoon, but then it will be discharged into the water course, which we saw earlier on. As you'll see in the report, the consultees do want more detail by way of um, surface water management, and these can be requested by way of condition. This is also quite a useful thing. It shows you the flow paths of the water. So the broads are up here. The site, as you can see, runs along here with the entrance here. This There is concern, and it was raised by the, um, the neighbours and a few of the consultees as well. The existing surface water drainage issues on the Pound Lane Junction, but as you can see, the flow paths go from the east along down the bo bottom of the site. So this is where the attenuation lagoon will be, and then up towards the north. This, I think, just gives you a better understanding of the um, the landscaping proposed. So here's the footpath that I mentioned earlier. If I zoom in a bit, you can see it a bit clearer. So here's that footpath running along the bottom of the attenuation lagoon, coming up, and then they can obviously follow the paved surface back. There's also bulb planting around here to, um, to add a bit to the character. And then obviously you've got some native hedging along this area as well to kind of shield these properties from here. I believe this might be the last slide. Yes, it is. So if we move back to the committee report, um, in section four, we have seen we can see the um, the consultation responses. Since this report has been published, there has been an additional eighteen letters of objection. However, nothing material, nothing different has been provided that hasn't been already included in the report. So, as you can see in the report, at the time of writing, there were seventy six letters of objection, and obviously these are more in detail at point four point one. But these can be separated into six main issues. So we've got the principle of development, highways, flooding, slash drainage, amenity, ecology, and then a broader other category. And we can explore these in more detail as we move further through the report. So if we move on to the parish council, the parish council, their response here is their initial response back in December 2018. And they've sent in an additional one just this week, I believe. So they object to the application for the, follow for the following reasons. Pound Lane is of su substandard width and is used as a rat run, speeding on Main Road. Main Road is busy when the Acle Strait is shut. Overloaded sewage system outside village development limits. Philby has taken more than its fair share of development. Lack of amenities. And then in their consultation response that they provided earlier this week, they also noted how they had concerns about the footpath and the narrowing towards that junction down the bottom, as I mentioned earlier. Now, I won't go through all the consultation responses in detail, as it makes more sense to talk about them as we go through each main issue. But I will just point out a few of them that I think are important to note. So obviously we've got the um, neighbouring homes officer here at 4.8 who supports the application for being policy compliant and the homes, especially these affordable units, are above the side standards. She also said that she'd welcome a discussion with the owner retenure slash options subject to the satisfactory conditions of a section 106 agreement. Also, we have the Historic Environment Service commenting on the application at point four point nine. They note that the application is with approximately 300 metres west of a dense pattern of archaeological features recorded from crop marks visible on aerial photographs. The features of probable prehistoric Roman and medieval date have been recorded, and there's considerable evidence that the areas of higher ground between the Broadland wetlands are intensively utilised and occupied in the prehistoric Roman and medieval period. There is potential for heritage assets, buried archaeological remains to be present within the proposed development area. 
and that the significance would be adversely affected by the proposed development. However, to mitigate this, the historic environment officer has suggested the pre-commencement condition, which is detailed at section 4.9 in your report. Also, if we move on, as I mentioned earlier, you'll remember the trees I talked down at the southern end of the site that our arboricultural officer commented on the trees and noted that they had a fairly limited lifespan. Two tempo assessments were completed, but the TPOs weren't merited in any case. Although, as I mentioned earlier, they're at the southern portion of the site and aren't proposed to be impacted by this development. Also, I'll point you towards the NHS response at pay at point 4.14 they have no objection to the application and then the broads authority at 4.15 when this application initially came in they did object to any potential adverse impacts on the trinity broads triple si from runoff however when it when um further drainage information was provided back in 2019 they're reconsulted on it when the, and the treatment plant was not proposed and therefore they have removed their objection as the pumping station will be used to dispose of foul water. If we move on to the principle of development here at 11.4 oh, 11 in your committee report, jumping ahead a bit. So Philby is a secondary village and it, as we've seen previously, you'll remember that hashed image overlay I put over the satellite image ring. The site is outside the village development limits, although it is adjacent along this boundary here. So as members will be well aware, the council does not currently enjoy a five-year housing land supply and therefore in line with paragraph 11D from the National Planning po Policy Framework, the tilted balance in favour of sustainable development must be applied. And whilst this doesn't mean that we should be approving all applications, it does need to be demonstrated that any development that we do approve is sustainable and as I mentioned earlier we've got down here the amenities in Philby and obviously the pub towards this side of the road as well. The application can be su sufficiently conditioned such that the benefits of the additional housing does outweigh any um, harms. So obviously I, th I think it's mentioned in the committee report obviously as well but this is grade one agricultural land and policy cs12 part g from the core strategy does mention and detail agricultural land uh, in accordance with the mppf and this seeks to protect such land and avoid losses where possible but these do not simply refuse development on such land. The context is that much of Norfolk and particularly within the borough is higher graded land. And in order to meet the, um, the housing needs that we have, we do need to obviously develop some of this land. And obviously as members will be aware, this does form part of the planning balance. So in, order, in combination with the affordable housing down here and the public benefits as well, in this instance, it's not felt that the um, the grade one land is sufficient enough to outweigh the benefits of the scheme. So if we move on to the highways next, obviously I'll bring up the map showing the proposed footpath. The proposal would introduce a footpath down Pound Lane, which obviously it doesn't have now. Members will remember the, um, the photos from earlier on. And the junction down here does narrow and it is proposed obviously to narrow slightly further. It would introduce a continuous footpath, although you do have to cross over the road, it is a continuous footpath down to main road to where the shops and services are. And I should just reiterate that this is only indicative at this point. And as you can see at the um, Norfolk County Council Highways Officer's response at 4.19 in the committee report, he has removed his holding objection and says that the, um, the indicative plans, really the footpath can be dealt with by way of condition later on. And some obviously sufficient information has been provided at this stage so that this application can be determined as things stand. If we move on to flooding, which was another issue that was brought up earlier, I think this is the plan I'm after. So the southern portion of the site is in flood zone two and three, although all the development is within the lowest flood risk, so flood risk one. 
So the proposed development is affected by flooding in the south southwest of the site, concentrated to the site boundary, with flooding impinging on site event in larger events. There is a water course following the site boundary along the south southwest west, which flows towards the north northwest. On site, there is minor ponding in the 3.3% AEP event. There is a minor flow path in the 1% AEP event. There is moderate major flow path in the 0.1 AEP event. However, this is predominantly adjacent slash onto the site boundary. The proposed development takes this into account as, and has been developed with this risk in mind. The proposed development is not at risk of flood risk. The site proposes an attenuation of surface water in the lagoon feature before con controlled discharge to the outlined water course to the south of the site. The discharge flow rates have been significantly improved as part of the development and this would benefit the surface water drainage of the site. As you'll remember, a number of neighbours did raise concerns about the flooding at the Pound Lane main road junction. This will not be affected by the development. The flow path travels north northwest from the proposed development, i.e. the flood risk does not flow towards the junction from the proposed development, but rather away from it. The flood risk identified at this T junction forms part of the flow path traveling northwest along the line of the watercourse and the site boundary. So that was flooding dealt with. If we then move on to amenity, which is the next issue, I believe. So there are a few concerns raised by neighbours, either by loss of view to this field or by overlooking. So you'll remember, this is probably one of the best plans to show, this property here, one of the affordable units, the only window looking out to the east is a non -habit, I believe it's a bathroom window, and it is proposed to be obscure glaze. So therefore any overlooking towards this side of this to the east is considered to be sufficiently mitigated. There's also hedgerow proposed to be planted along the boundary of 16, as I mentioned earlier, as we we're talking through the photos, and this should help avoid any disturbance to these properties as well. Obviously, loss of a view is not a material planning concern as well, and also loss of um, value on property prices is something that can't be have material weight put towards as well. So the application in terms of ecology is considered to be an improvement. Obviously, the water lagoon feature will increase the biodiversity on the site as well, because obviously with a monoculture in terms of plant life, there's a lack of diversity at the moment, and obviously this will be improved somewhat, as well as with the planting and the landscaping scheme proposed as well. The required £1,650 has been paid towards the habitat mitigation and monitoring strategy. And as the site is located within the orange 400 metres to 2.5 kilometre zone, an orange, well, it's in the orange zone, but a, um, a shadow HRA and a template HRA, as well as a bespoke HRA has been provided, and these are all deemed appropriate. Obviously, we can flick back to the report where Natural England and Netty have both consulted, been consulted on the application and they raise no, no objections to the application. If we move on to point six, which is really the miscellaneous points that were raised by neighbours, this, um, this application obviously came in in 2018. And a, a number of neighbours did note that they either thought this application had been refused or that there had been previous refusals on the site. The report does say at 11.34 that this is there is no planning history on the site since 1990. And obviously members will be well aware of the procedures we've had to put in place during the COVID-19 pandemic. So that really brings us on to the summary here. So if we look at 11.37, just to summarise, the applications for 15 dwellings and attenuation lagoon and footpath on Pound Lane, the development is not an isolated one with good access to facilities and services, including educational facilities and village amenities. There are no significant or demonstrable harms that outweigh the need for the provision of housing in a sustainable location. And therefore, at 12.1, the recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions detailed in the report to ensure the, an adequate form of development, including those requested by consultees, and a Section 106 agreement securing the affordable housing and a management company. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, for that um, detailed report. Uh, very good. Um, any councillors got any technical questions uh, for Robert, please? If they could just indicate to Sammy, please. 
Yes, Chairman, just to confirm that we do have Councillor Lorne back joined us now. Um, we did lose him quite a few times during the meeting, so unfortunately he won't be able to partake in the voting on this application, but he'll be OK for the next. And we have a question from Councillor Mogford, please. Councillor Mogford. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, the only real problem I have with this development is, in fact, on, on the highways, and it's the is the exit and entrance onto the uh, 1064 Main Road. Um, I think like one or two of us probably in this meeting today, I, I, I use this road quite a bit, uh, going to and from Ormsby and, uh, and onwards to Hemsby. Um, and I can confirm that getting out onto Main Road can be very, very difficult. Councillor Mogford. It's mainly the speed of the traffic. Uh, Councillor Mogford. Councillor yes. Mogford. Is this a technical question? Yes, it is. That doesn't sound question. like a technical question. Um, oh, sorry. It all comes okay. in a debate, yeah. Well, would you like me to come back a bit later on then? Yes, in the debate. You can talk all about I'll what you're saying. I'll come back in the debate. I'll come back in the debate, Chairman. Thank you. Um, Councillor T. Wright, Chairman. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Chairman, just to, to the officer, he did actually mention the question of the, uh, the pumping station as. Um, resolve the issues regarding the possibility of uh, foul sewage going into the uh, the broads area. Could the officer tell us what happens when the pumping station breaks down? Because we all have experiences of this when it happens in the borough, and there's no question about it. At some time, the pumping station will break down. Rob? Robert, you just answered uh, Councillor Wright's yes, question. Sorry, I was just double checking yep. with them um, with Gordon yep. first. Yep, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I mean, I think angling water or whoever deals with it obviously has to deal that as soon as possible after any issues take place and all we can all we can plan for is that things work when they're and they're designed to work how they're meant to well i just i, I just don't find that acceptable that we there's no response because there's no question i think we can all speak as councillors where we've had issues where pumping stations have failed and roads have been flooded and everything else we're talking here about in the rural setting where this could go into the public water. And this is where the, the issues were, um, were raised in the first place. And obviously resolved by the fact that they've decided to put a pumping station in there, but it will break down. I just don't think it's, unless there's a, a response to see what would actually happen in those circumstances, then I don't see how this could um, proceed. The other um, issue, uh, a question I want to ask is, on page 11, 4.16, it does actually mention that with uh, Councillor Adrian Thompson, there's been a, an email exchange with uh, Brandon Lewis MP, and it's attached to this report. That I can't find it attached to the report. I was interested to see what there were, the issues were regarding the flood risk assessment uh, with regard to the, uh, to the Member of Parliament. Yeah, so in terms of that one, I believe there weren't, attached in the end because Counter Thompson wanted to speak and that I think that was dealt with pretty much as the report was being published but in terms of the flood risk assessment the flood risk assessment was submitted as soon as the application came in it has been on our website ever since November 2018 so I think that might have just been a matter of um, the member just not being able to find the flood risk assessment on our website. Okay so there is no report then from uh, no email exchange then? No not no. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Freeman, Chairman. Councillor Freeman. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Just a quick um, question for Rob. Um, Rob, has there been a traffic survey carried out at all by highways, as this is probably number one or two rat run in the borough? 
Um, so in terms of highways carrying out a, an assessment, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Obviously, with the application, there was a planning supporting statement and a transport statement and an access appraisal submitted with the application. And highways obviously don't have an objection to it. As, um, as I think it says in the highways response in the report, any proposal, so any works to the junction would obviously need to pass this um, the stage two assessment so any works that do take place would have to be signed off by highways by way of condition as well yeah i, I understand that um rob the, the, the sheer volume of traffic down um which essentially is just a, a lane um is, is incredible if you drive it i used to drive it regularly i don't now because it's so dangerous um i go down philby lane but thank you for that thank you thank you chair. okay Councillor Hammond, Chairman. Councillor Hammond. Yeah, sorry about that, Chairman. Um, Rob, could you um, please tell me how we can make certain the footpath is delivered when the land that's going on isn't in the applicant's ownership? So, in term, are you on about the footpath on the highways land? I just want to double Yeah. Yeah, so because it's on highways land, we can request by condition. So I think it's dealt with by highways as well. So highways have to agree the standard and then they have to um, they have to implement the footpath before any, um, any of the properties can be occupied. And that is something that we do use quite, um, quite regularly when off-site works, off works are needed. But I, I didn't think there was enough space as you come to Main Road to get the footpath there with the ditch that's already there. So the plans at the moment that we have are only indicative and then the any detailed plan would have to be submitted as like a um, as way of condition. And I think that is in the committee report as conditions SHC 33A and 33B. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else? Okay, anybody else, please? Just Chairman, Councillor Wright has got his hand yes. up again, sorry. Sorry, sorry Chairman, uh, uh, I'm sorry yep. to come back again. There was one other issue that I, I wanted to raise with the officer. This is, again, with one that I raise every single meeting, is in regards to Grade 1 agricultural land. I ask this question at every meeting. At what point do we say that no more Grade 1 agricultural land will be used for development? Because I've looked at the map of a grade one agricultural land in, in Norfolk. And the only grade one agricultural land that there is, is on the coastal strip, going up to the north from uh, North Winterton, in Yarm from to the south down to Hopton. Anything to the west, there is no grade one agricultural land up to Lincolnshire. Now, obviously I, I raise this on the basis that after January the 1st, we're gonna probably become more self-sufficient in terms of agriculture. Yet here we are, we're building on what is the top quality agricultural land which is regarded obviously as the the best and i just want to know how much it's got to be used before we say we're not going to use any more or is it a question that grade one agricultural land is up for grabs and we can use as much of it as we want i just want to know at what point do we say no more grade one agricultural land because every single time we come up with a plan and i would say probably well probably three times out of five there's grade one agricultural land that's up for, um, for, uh, for planning in our area. Yeah, okay, so obviously that forms part of the planning balance. So on one hand, you have the grade one agricultural land, but then we obviously, as you'll be aware, we don't have a five-year housing land supply. And then you have to weigh against the public benefits of the scheme as well. And then it's something that obviously we've come to the conclusion as officers that it weighs we can support it so we've recommended approval but then it's for members to decide and see where they fall on that one okay just, just very quickly chairman if i can just come back on that I, I i hear what is being said by the officer and obviously i accept what they're they're saying in terms of the the, the professional and everything else all i can say is that at the last meeting we had a planning application which was recommended for refusal and a part of the refusal that was put down is that it was grade one agricultural land. So it just seems it, it fits 
when we want to, but when it's not, then we can just discard it. And I, I just find that that's an anomaly, and I, I will continue raising this until sometimes a grain on agricultural land is protected. Okay. Councillor Bird, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Bird. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just for Rob, please. Um, on page 21, we look at 11.14, and it says comments were received noting the lack of visibility to the west of the junction of Pound Lane and the main road with a recommendation condition to ensure that a, a visibility splay uh, could be provided. Um, this would include the relocation of the telegraph pole to ensure the splay can be maintained. Could you show me that on the map? Because it is the telegraph it on highways land or is it on private land or? So I, be, I believe the telegraph pole this is referencing is, um, I'll just share my screen again so you can see it, is, um, is this one here. So I, this is another one that can be dealt with by way of condition. And then it's for um, North County Council Highways officers to um, to decide whether, whether where the telegraph pole is going to be proposed, whether that is acceptable to them or, or not really. Right. Um, okay. Well, it's a dangerous road, obviously, and, and we've just heard how difficult it is. And, uh, and it, everybody who uses it need as much vision as they possibly can get. Um, I do think it should be some form of condition that uh, it's in safety terms that uh, they can see clearly the junction. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bird. Um, anybody else, Amy? Councillor Mogford. I don't know if that's an old hand, Councillor Mogford, or a new hand. Councillor Mogford? You just muted, Councillor Mogford. Thank you. Uh, yes, I want to talk about the visibility display. Hang on, on hang on, on, hang on. on. Councillor Mogford, is this a technical question? Yes, it's a technical question. I asked the question. We don't. We can debate that in the debate. Right, this is a technical question. And it, right. it regards the difficulty of entering and leaving um, uh, Pound Lane. As, has any thought been given to making the, the Pound Lane from the top of the road to to where it, it goes to about three quarters of a mile across the fields, making that one way, because there is quite a big development going to go on uh, a mile and a quarter further on in, 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 in Ormsby. There's, you know, the, 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 the traffic generation is going to be much greater on this road, not only with this development, but with, with other developments in the area. And, you know, perhaps we ought to think about making it one way past these developments. Um, that would solve an awful lot of the problems. I'll talk about the, dis the, the visibility display uh, later on, but I'd like to ask that question. Have we thought about that? Rob? No, I haven't seen anything in relation to it becoming one way. No, I haven't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other technical questions for the officer, please? Uh, no further hands raised, Chairman. Okay then, um, so at this point, um, I invite the applicant's agent, uh, Mr. Phil Hardy, to speak. Mr. Hardy? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes, Mr. Hardy, we can hear you. So you have five minutes, Mr. Hardy. Good. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Phil Hardy of Parker Planning Services, the agent for this application. Before I start, I'd like to thank the planning officer, Rob Tate, for his helpful and proactive communications since he took over this application. They've been both refreshing and appreciated. The application before you today is for the erection of 15 dwellings, three of which would be affordable housing units in line with the council's policy. The application proposed as a result of the site being successful in the council's call for sites process, in which it was the only site in the village of Philby that was thought suitable. The applicant and I attended the parish council meeting in December 2018 when the application was discussed and after the meeting the applicant offered the land to the north of the site to the parish for community use in return for their support for the application. The parish council advised they would not support the application under any circumstances. 
The applicant's family has had links in the village for many years and was hoping to promote the site with the parish council's support and input rather than their objection. The site's success in the core for science process some three years ago for 15 units is the reason we have brought it forward now, demonstrating not in outline, but in a full application of all the additional associated costs with that, that the scheme is both serious and deliverable. The free affordable units are an important social benefit and the housing mix has been informed by the council's own housing enabling officer. In the Philby neighbourhood plan consultation report, September 2019, in which local people were asked for their opinions, the 113 people who responded to the size of new homes they would prefer to see, 48 said one to two bedrooms and 56 said three to four bedrooms. Just nine people suggested five bedrooms. The scheme before you today would have one one bed unit four two-bed units, three, four three-bed units, and six four-bed units, largely in line with the aspirations of local people in consultation. In order to deal with and provide an appropriate surface water drainage solution, a pumping station would be provided on site as well as a lagoon-style feature around which public access will be granted, so local people and bog walkers can walk around it. This is an important environmental benefit which also supports health and well-being at the same time. In the same consultation report of September 2019, page four demonstrates that flooding issues were the third most important environmental issue, which 19 people had raised in the consultation, and this scheme would undoubtedly help with this on Pound Lane due to the pumping station and lagoon solutions proposed. Many local people were concerned there is no footpath along Pound Lane and that cars drive quickly up and down, causing highway safety concerns. This proposal would build a footpath from the site access to the main road and Norfolk County Council Highways have accepted this subject to the planning condition to ensure it is delivered in line with their requirements, which we welcome. This is very important um, for the local community and no development would take place until the planning condition, ensuring it is delivered in line with highways requirements, is discharged. So the local community can have confidence that the footpath, which is 1.5 metres wide for most of the way, is signed off. Finally, the ecology assessments carried out have concluded there would be a net gain overall for biodiversity, which again weighs in favour of the scheme. On the issue of Grade 1 agricultural land, in the absence of a five-year housing land supply position, the council concedes it currently has just over three years, the application should only be refused if the perceived harm significantly and demonstrably outweighs the benefits. The benefits of the scheme are very significant in terms of public access, the provision of a footpath on pound lane, affordable housing, improving the viability of local shops, facilities and services, and the flood solution. The application offers vast economic, social and environmental benefits simultaneously, the three pillars of sustainability, and it is not considered that the loss of Grade 1 agricultural land outweighs these benefits, let alone significantly and demonstrably outweighs them. On the matter of grading, agricultural land on site, bills the size of this site subject to this application are becoming harder to farm with large modern farm equipment and with gardens and houses on two out of the three sides it's becoming increasingly difficult to farm these areas due to chemical buffer restrictions. Associated noise in this dense area of housing in Philby it's considered the harm of using this land for residential purposes would be moderate at best certainly would not outweigh the benefits of providing the flooding solution, the highway safety benefits through the provision of a footpath, the, social, seconds, be Mr. Hardy. Thank the you. social benefits associated with the affordable housing units and the net biodiversity gains. In the final analysis, this scheme delivers a vast array of social, economic and environmental benefits simultaneously. The loss of grade one agricultural land would not significantly outweigh the benefits, which is how the application must be assessed in the absence of a five-year housing land supply. And farming this field in such close proximity to houses on Pound Lane and the surrounding area is no longer viable due to associated noise with farm machinery and the impacts this has on the immunity of neighbouring dwellings. It is therefore considered the benefits of the scheme outweigh the harm by a considerable degree and I would hope members would be minded to agree with the planning officer and his recommendation and approve the application. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr Hardy um, for your detailed um, report there. Uh, any councillors got any Technical questions they want to ask Mr. Hardy, please, if they could just uh, indicate to Sammy. Gentlemen, I have no hands raised. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Hardy, for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I understand we have an objector um, to speak, um, Mr. 
Howard Millam. Mr. Millam, are you there? Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Millman. You have five minutes and I'll let you know when you've got 30 seconds remaining. Thank you. Uh, many people have already mentioned some concerns, so forgive me if I repeat certain issues, but I do feel they are warranted. I'd like to, uh, there was one letter of support, a comment read that until re uh, redundant buildings in the market can be used for residential use instead of standing there empty forevermore, we have little other choice but to build in villages. As Mr. Mr. Tate stated, there were 76 letters of objection from neighbours, plus there have been 45 separate issues raised in this document alone. Grievances are being aired, and I know we've covered some of this, but when you look at it, flooding, poor street lighting, no public transport, lack of facilities and essential services, and all of this without mentioning Highway's comments on this proposal, which I'll come to in a moment. The road is narrow, there is no room for a footpath. The comment from the parish council that was made, Pound Lane is a substandard width and rat run. Now we've heard this several times. I would add, especially for the elderly, that if some of the bungalows on Pound Lane, it does make it more difficult for residents. NCC Highway's observation in the document reads as follows. I still have concerns regarding whether the proposed footway can actually be constructed due to the close proximity of the adjacent trees, which I do not believe are in the highway verge. It won't be as simple as pruning branches. The main issue will be constructing the footway in the presence of roots. The tight junction radius will increase the potential for conflicts between turning vehicles. I also note that the application has stated that the two telegraph poles need to be relocated, although it's not clear where there is space to move them to. And that's the highways comments. Last week, our local councillor, um, so I think it was our highways officer, planning officer, Mr. Tate, I think we met you. General came down to see us, uh, planning officer, and came to see us with our councillor, resident. Um, and uh, we're looking at the traffic movement in and out of Pound Lane. And the gentleman was, um, I'm sure he, he'd be happy for me to say this, he was visibly surprised when he witnessed every vehicle turning in from the main road, having to cross over the centre line. Also at that junction, we witnessed another vehicle having to mount the left bank as a farm vehicle was attempted to complete its turn into Pound Lane. Now that would then become a walkway. So where would the vehicle go then? Um, nowadays, when most people reach legal age, they learn to drive. And with the 15 proposed properties, it would not be unreasonable to assume there could be as many as 30 vehicles driving on and off that land daily creating even more hazards and congestion. This is not taking into account the visitors driving into Pound Lane, which also brings into question parking. At present, visitors and or contractors are having to park on either the road or the grass verge. With pavements added, this would greatly reduce parking opportunities. I'd like to draw your attention to item 1-2 in the planning application, and this has already been mentioned. Grade 1 agricultural, yes, Grade 1 agricultural land. When the Secretary of State, George Eustace, gave an address at the 2020 NFU conference, he said the entire nation eats the food we produce. One in eight of us earn our livelihood from the food industry, and this year, more than ever, we'll need to work together. He went on, a decade from now, I want the rest of the world to be coming here to see how it is done. If all the other councils consider an action and proposal this council is considering, I imagine he'd be very disappointed as at this rate, there will be little farmland left, plus fewer jobs for people, and at a time when we desperately need to preserve and support our farming industry. My observation is that all this building on our agricultural land is now reducing our ability to grow more crops, such as wheat, to feed ourselves without importing it and paying over the odds. This farmland is yielding rotational crops, and surely with the way things are at this time, we need to keep all of this farmland producing. It's teeming with wildlife as well. So that would also be dealt a harmful blow should this go ahead. A lot of people I've spoken to believe the concept of affordable, affordable housing is a good one. But as always, the practicality of that helping young persons to get on the ladder is very far reaching indeed. People in our community are asking why house building isn't first being considered in other areas. 30 seconds remain in Mr. Millman. Thank you. Such as wasteland, empty pubs, old restaurant buildings, just like the one letter of support suggested rather than land that's being efficiently farmed. 
In conclusion, I'd ask you, please give serious consideration to the long-term impact this will have on our farming industry and local community before making your decision. Thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Millman. Um, are there any councillors got any technical questions, please, for Mr. Millman? Chairman, I have no hands raised. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for your time and input, Mr. Millman. Thanks very much. Thank you. I now ask um, if there's any parish councillors, um, Sammy. I don't think there is. No, no parish councillors, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so at this point, I move to ward councillors and Councillor Adrian Thompson. Um, I understand wishes to speak. Councillor Thompson? Yes, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Can you all hear me? Yep. Yep, lovely job. Uh, just to clarify a few points, first of all, there was an email correspondence between me and, and the MP, along with photographs of raw sewage being in, poured out of that pumping station, which had not been included in its report, and that was dealt with by your predecessor, Gemma Manthorpe. The other point to clear up is that at the Parish Council meeting in 2018, when we had the call for sites, this site was not selected. It was deemed narrow access and backland development, and I refer to page 221 of the draft local plan, and this site was not adopted at that stage. Now, if I may go on, um, obviously you've heard why we're looking at this site, because you haven't got your five-year plan. Um, so you're looking at sites outside our development area, which as a, as a borough councillor and as a parish councillor, our neighbourhood plan is to be deposited any day now with the borough council, which doesn't support any further development in Filby. And as you've heard, we've got 94 letters of objection to this development from residents. Now, our objections are quite clear. It is Grade 1 agricultural land. You can't get away from this. So as contrary to policy CS6 and CS12, most productive land. And obviously, with, with Brexit and the uncertainty that's bringing, we need every acre. There's no question of that. This site intrudes onto the open countryside. So again, considering the amount of development we've had in Philby, it's contrary to policy CS2. Now you've heard the site is on a slope, it's actually on a seven metre slope. In terms of our countryside, that's quite a, quite a steep slope actually. So this, this can be seen, this, pro this area can be seen from the 12 properties on the main road, that is 20, as well as the 25 properties of Pound Lane. So it's contrary to policy CS09, which protects the immediate of future and existing residents. Now, water runoff from this site is not just, a, you've heard, it's a seven, metre, a seven metre drop there. This proposed lagoon has not got to hold this water. It is got to go into that dike. That dike feeds directly into the Trinity Broads. And Ailish Rothney, who's the manager of the Trinity Broads, which is a triple SSI, is very, very concerned about this. There's a letter gone in to the planning officer explaining this. Now, one very, very important point here is Angley Water, who deal with our surge. And they say that the caster pump has a has capacity. I no doubt it has a caster, but our problem is getting the surge from Pound Lane to caster. When they put our new our new pipe in, it narrows at Philby Heath, and at peak times we get a back um, back pressure. The houses at Philby Heath that had to have non-return valves fitted, so rear sewage doesn't come into their house, and this backs up as far as the King's Head. And Angley Water, in their pre-development inquiry, said this site would have a cumulative detrimental effect to our network performance. Tankers are often seen outside Pound Lane taking sewage away when this breaks down, which is quite a regular occurrence, and this will be difficult if this so-called path goes ahead. And I'll quote Ailish Rothney, who's manager of the, tri of the Trinity Broad, who says she's extremely concerned. Increasing urban development in an area so close to the Trinity Broad is unacceptable and goes against all Great Yarmouth policies in terms of protecting the environment. It goes against the National Policy Framework 8.3 on environmental objectives on page 16 of this report, and water runs directly from this site into the water what me and you drink. Now, an attempt has been made to provide a continuous footpath. The word being continuous, this footpath is not continuous. You have to cross Pound Lane and recross again in order to access the facilities been mentioned. Hence, it is contrary to policy CX, CS16. There is no continuous footpath which will have an inverse, adverse impact on the safety and efficiency of local road users, including pedestrians. Trees which are on parish land will have to be damaged or removed to screw this footpath in, as confirmed with highways on page 11, who says, doubts whether, I doubt whether this footpath can actually be constructed. 
Now, as a consequence of putting this path in, power lane itself will be narrowed to 4.8 metres for a length of 52 metres from the junction. This lane is well used by heavy uh, agricultural machinery, arctics, etc. Narrowing this lane is a disaster waiting to happen. We have already 25 houses up there, including 17 borough council residents. Highways have no objection, although they do state narrowing the road will increase potential conflict between vehicles turning in. 30 no seconds doubt, remaining. No doubt it will. If a lorry turns into that lane as you are, you either back out onto the main road or the lorry backs up 52 metres. It is ridiculous. As already stated, highways don't object, providing they can provide a 2.4 metre, 120 metre vision display each side of the pound lane junction. Mr Chairman, on page 12, section SHC 17B, that says this, this vision splay cannot physically be achieved. They don't own the land and it's not for sale. Therefore, the highway's conditions cannot be met. And this application should be refused now, not for conditions, refused now before occupancy, as it will be too late once you're built. And this is confirmed by a professional architect, not me up there with a tape measure, Mr Chairman, we've already had two sites in Philby recently refused on the policies I've stated. Plus, this site is compounded by a lack of continuous pavement, a dangerous narrowing of Pound Lane, which is unsafe for residents, and it is unsafe to approve this application, that it cannot meet highways criteria and is a, and is a threat to a legally protected site, i.e. the Broads. I therefore ask you to be consistent, Mr Chairman and Members, and refuse this application, upholding the plan, upholding public and um, public confidence. This site was not deemed suitable in 2018. It's not suitable now, and the and the disadvantages that we've heard recently significantly and demonstrably outweigh the advantages. Please refuse it. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Um, any councillors got any technical questions for the ward councillor, please? If I could just indicate to Sammy. No hands raised, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Thank you for your input. Thank you. So at this point, we now uh, move to the uh, committee debate and the decision. Um, what does the committee think and what do they feel? Um, I have no hands raised at the moment. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wright. Councillor Wright. Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, I'd asked questions before to the officers. I'm certainly unhappy about uh, the progress of, of this particular application. Obviously, hearing the uh, the developer as well as the objectors, um, I'm certainly of the firm opinion that there are more questions than answers with regard to the uh, development of this land, and uh, and I will certainly. Uh, be voting uh, against this development um, on the grounds. One, I haven't received a, a suitable answer regarding the the pumping station because I think, as Councillor Thompson has said uh, in his um, few minutes uh, that he's just had, is there are issues there with regard to the to, to the, um, the the sewage and the, the water there. And bearing in mind, of course, the close proximity to Trinity Board, as I said was our drinking water there. I know it can be treated, but they uh, there are concerns there for that one. And also in the in relation to the, the grade one agricultural land, I just think it is a matter for us to discuss in terms of uh, grade one um, protection um, for the reasons that, that I've outlined. I do hear what the officers and what the applicants have said in regard to the need for housing uh, to take preference over this area, but I consider but as an area with very little grade one agricultural land, um, that that should be one of the reasons why we could um, oppose this site. And obviously the concerns that have been raised with regard to highways and the questions over there, I think that there's suitable questions that need to be answered before any further action is taken on here. So I'd certainly move uh, that we refuse this application, obviously on the, the grounds that I've suggested. Certainly the most, probably one of the most important ones are what I've considered grade one agricultural land, but also the unanswered questions in what happens when the pumping station fails? Do we have a major incident? Nobody's answered that question. And, and I think, you know, until we get an answer to that, I think we, 
we should um, we should oppose his application. So I move. Thank you, Councillor Roy. Anybody um, else wish to speak, please? Councillor Freeman, Chairman. Councillor Freeman. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, to be honest, the, the problem I have is we, we seem to lack consistency in what we do. Um, we were being told two weeks ago that the land supply was at about 7.2 years, and now we're being told it's uh, three point something. And the lack of consistency, and I have to agree with Tony Wright about if we're going to build on agricultural land uh, because we need to get houses and benefits, or we need to make the decision and do it properly. But we can't just waver in and out to suit ourselves. I'm looking at Google Earth at the moment on my back screen, and this development will take up possibly half, two thirds. And as the um, applicant's agent said, um, farm machinery is big now and what's left is pretty well unviable and it's obvious that the parish council don't want it so if this was approved are we going to see um oh well we can't use that bit of land we might as well fill it all with houses but my overarching one is on the road safety um last night i drove back through philby and the six cars in front of me it was about half past uh, six the six cars in front of me turned left up Pound Lane to use the rat run to get down to Ormsby. I carried on and went up Philby Lane and I'm just, I just feel that the, the traffic volume and the width of the road and the lack of visibility just stacks up to disasters waiting to happen. And uh, sometimes there has to be said enough is enough. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Freeman. Um, anybody else? Councillor Mugford. Thank you. Mugford. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I'd like to return again to the uh, uh, exit and entrance onto the 1064. Um, it's extremely difficult to get out of Pound Lane onto the 1064 uh, you know, at the popular times of sort of like half past eight in the morning and, and half past four in the afternoon. Um, the, the map doesn't really show, but the both, both sides uh, are, are of the pound lane, the, the, the 1064 has bends in it. So you're even if you're right at the front, you can't see very well uh, the traffic coming either way. The traffic coming up from the post office is hidden by a, a slight bend as well. And the traffic coming down from, from, from the case to direction is usually coming along much quicker. So there's a problem, there's a problem there for, for both of vision and, and of speed. The other major problem is the sheer size of vehicles that turn in and out of this road. The other day I had to back up because someone with a JCB uh, road tra mass massive tractor with a twin axle trailer with about 30 tonne of something on it was trying to turn into, into Pound Lane. And about five cars had to back up Pound Lane to let this le Leviathan come through. They're just too big for the roads, you know. Agricultural machinery has got huge these days, and the roads don't accommodate it. Certainly, these back lanes don't accommodate it. I, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, perhaps, perhaps you ought to think seriously about making part of this this thing one way. Um, I'd now like to mention the pumping station. Um, I am so surprised that there isn't a backup pump already built into this plan, uh, especially with the uh, locality of the. Of the uh, of the Trinity Broads, if the pump fails uh, uh, when we've got you know high, high water tables and high water flows like we've got at the moment with all the wet weather, I can see problems occurring here uh, going into the Trinity Broads. I'm not happy with that. Um, I, I'm quite happy with the development itself per se. Um, I know enough about agriculture to know that that piece of ground or that might be the best land in the world is too small to farm economically today with today's machinery. But there's no excuse not to make the place as, as good as possible. And I think we've got to do something about the traffic and we've certainly got to do something about the security of the sewage. And as things stand at the moment, Chairman, I find it very difficult to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mugford. Um, any other councillors, please? Councillor Wainwright, Chairman. Councillor Wainwright. Am I? 
You muted Councillor Wainwright. So thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I mean, quite clearly the recommendation is to approve this. And we've heard a lot of um, arguments and uh, debate in the last half an hour about pumping stations. Well, things do break down. And, you know, there's pumping stations throughout the country that occasionally break down. I would imagine that Anglian Water have got the technology that they know when a pumping station breaks down and act on it pretty quickly. We've had pumping stations in Bradwell that have broke down. And, you know, they have to be upgraded at times. But this is not a regular occurrence. It might happen once. It might happen once. But they're quickly on the case. And this water can be treated. And then we're always in Philby. It's always about the speeding and always about the roads. I mean, and I heard somebody mention in the debate or the technical question that this is the second worst rat run in, the, in, the, in Norfolk or, or the borough. I mean, what a load of rubbish. I mean, I could take you to 20 or 30 rat runs in the borough that basically are worse than that one. And I do drive around North Norfolk quite considerably. It seems to me that nobody wants anything in Philby whatsoever. We keep refusing these uh, applications. Um, the officers recommend them. And I certainly will be supporting this. I mean, I'm sure these issues can be worked through, but you know, we need accommodation. We need houses in the Northern parishes, which is something I say all the time. And we just don't seem to get them. Stick them in Bradwell, stick them in Belton, stick them all in the Southern parishes. It doesn't matter about rat runs there, but in the, in the Northern parishes like Philby, especially Philby, they don't want anything, nothing. And I will certainly be supporting the officer's recommendation to approve. Thank you, Councillor Wainwright. Um, anybody else wish to speak? Um, no further questions, Chairman. I, I can see Councillor Thompson has raised his hand, but we don't allow any further questions. No. So just to let him know, we won't allow any further questions. Thank you. Um, we do have a proposal from Councillor Tony Wright um, to refuse the application. Have we a seconder for that, please? Chairman, I'd second that. Chairman, can we just could just confirm the the on the grounds of for refusal, please? Yes, on what grounds? Yes, I I, I did say on the grounds, obviously, of use of uh, ground one agricultural land, but also in relation to the possibility of. Um, ingress into the uh, Trinity Broad should the pumping station um, break down. And I understand what has been said by other councillors with regard to this, but when you're in a rural setting, when you're talking about the main water supply area, it is of concern. And that was a con concern uh, to Natural England when, or the Environment Agency when they looked at it. And obviously when they said a pumping station was going to be input, that took away some of their concerns. But I'm concerned over that particular and I, I don't think that there's a, a suitable um, thing for that and there's also in relation to some of the issues regarding the highways and the junction um, well, six minutes to as well Just so um, I'm sure that there can be some uh, form that the officers could uh, look at in relation to that but certainly they're the areas that I consider need to be um, considered with this application. Had you included your concerns about the loss of the uh, a grade, but a grade one agricultural land yes. reasons. You do. I would remind members that you do need to be very specific and robust when you are uh, making a recommendation. Uh, when you're uh, making a proposal contrary to officer recommendation, it is important that you are thorough uh, to protect the council in an, in the event of any appeal. So I would ask that you take a few moments and that you perhaps consult the planning officer. Um, with regard to your clear and specific reasons for refusal, including any policy grounds. Thank you. Can, can I just say in, re in relation to that, that, as I said, at the last meeting, there was an application that was planned to be refused. And one of the grounds for refusal by the officers was the use of grade one agricultural land. Now, if it was good enough at that time, what I'm suggesting is that it should be good enough at this time. If that was a reasonable argument then, unless there were extenuating circumstances for that, and I didn't see any, um, then that should certainly be uh, grounds for a few. And I also think in relation to the questions about the possible pollution of uh, the Trinity Broad and the SSSI designated area as well, 
should the pumping station uh, fail? I think if we weren't to take that into account, and I've certainly not had any answers to say it's okay, that would be all right if that happens because of A, B, C, and D, then then clearly they need to be looked at. Now, I'm, you know, I'm obviously in the hands of the, the officers in relation to what we can and what we can't do legally, but they're certainly the grounds that I look at, what I consider are suitable enough for me to have enough concern to say I'm not happy with this application. Okay, uh, Councillor Roy. Um, just at this point, Rob, um, policy CS6 and CS12. Yes. Would you be able to just read those out for us, please? So it's quite a long policy. I am unmuted, aren't I? Yep. Yeah, good. So CS6 is part J where it goes on about agricultural land. So it says... CS6J says minimizing the potential loss of the very best and most versatile agricultural land by ensuring that development on such land is only permitted if it can be demonstrated that there is a, an overriding sustainability benefit from the development and that there is no realistic opportunities for accommodating the development elsewhere. And then CS12. Just hang on a second. I'm nearly there. CS12G says, recognizing the need to protect the best and most versatile use of agricultural land as a valuable, valuable resource for future generations and minimizing its loss to development in accordance with CS6. Okay. Um, so really those, those two policies would relate to what Councillor Wright is actually saying then. Yeah, but as I, as I said... Um, earlier on obviously i think the difference between i because i think council right is are you talking about the um the scrappy site from last time yes it was the last application that we had but that was that was put down as a, a grade one agricultural land yeah so i think in terms of this application the difference is really the um the sustainability of the site so even though it is obviously grade one agricultural land and outside the dev, dev limit because it's closer to the um the amenities and it's just got a better provision than the last application i think that's why this application is materially different and why we've gone to a different recommendation than that last that last application so councillor Wright, would you be happy as, as, as cs6 and cs12 yeah. you're happy yes. with those yes but I, I think there should also be a provision in with this i, I don't know how we would overcome this I would have considered that if there's a possibility of pollution, then that should also be a material consideration for us. Now, I don't know what policy that would come under or what, but I'm, I'm not happy that, well, I'm certainly not been satisfied that there is a solution to a problem that might be there. And I understand what Councillor Wainwright said regarding to pump stations. I made that point clear. We've all had the situation where pumping stations have failed and they will fail. But I think in this particular scenario, there are particular issues regarding this piece of land because it is close to Trinity Broad. There's a triple to SI designation in the area. And I think any pollution there would be absolutely devastating for the environment. So, you know, I take the CS6 and CS12 policies as probably the main part. But I think this should be added to this as well because, you know, that may well be a solution there, but I've not heard a solution. Okay. Is, is, is that right, Caroline? Um, could I ask that um, we give the planning officer a few moments to just sum summarise um, in kind of bullet point form members' objections and to read those back as a summary and then we can assess yep. whether... Yes. Yeah, if you could do that, Rob, please. Mr. Chairman, I've put my hand up to speak. Yes, Councillor Williamson, yep. Yeah. Thanks very much. Indeed. I haven't heard yet um, material reasons to actually turn this down because if we actually start using just land as the issue, you wouldn't build anywhere in the northern villages. 
there has to be a need for the villages to have new houses. And if this is a small field which is being used, that would seem a sustainable site, would seem all right for me. So I'm really concerned that this would go to appeal and be won on appeal very easily. Thank you. All right, Rob. Yes, yeah, so um, the points we've got down are grade one agricultural land, potential contamination of the triple SI and the water supply, and then the pound lane junction. What I would just say about the, um, the potential contamination is obviously the Broads Authority, the EA, and I think Natural England and NETI, none of them obviously objected to the application as well. So I would just put that out there as well. Okay then, are we are we happy with those reasons? Sorry, Chairman. Um, we've got um, Senior Planning Officer Gordon Sutherland who's got his hand raised. I don't know whether you wanted to go yeah, to him. Yes, no, that's first, fine. Yep, yep, yep. Or whether it's an accidental hand. Oh, Gordon. <laughs> You're just okay, on Gordon. mute, Gordon. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, it's a real hand. Um, no, it was just to say with regards to Grade One agricultural land. There's been no indication or intimation from government of a change in policy, national planning policy with regards to the protection of agricultural land. And unless or until uh, government said this was a higher material consideration, it uh, would remain just one consideration for dealing with planning applications. OK, Gordon, thanks for that. So we have a proposer and a seconder then um, to refuse. Are we happy are those, um, with those policies? Chairman? Yes? Chairman, could, could we also add that um, it's contrary to the local plan? Because it, it's in an area we didn't put in the local plan for development. Okay. Because I think that's quite relevant. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, there's been a lot of... Um, things that have taken place outside the local plan because we do not have the five-year land supply. So you can't use that. The reason that these people are putting forward applications, if you, it's one of the reasons is we do not have a five-year land supply. So you can't use that as an objection um, because it's outside the red lines. There's dozens of developments that have taken place outside the red lines during this period where we haven't had a five-year land supply. And as this moment in time, as as today, we do not have a five-year land supply. So you can't use that as an objection. Anybody else wish to speak? No? Sorry, no further hands raised, Chairman. So we have a proposer and a seconder to refuse on the grounds of policy CS6 and CS12. Okay. And I think were there not Rob, were there not further um, reasons than CS six and CS twelve? Yeah. So there was there yep. was the Pound Lane Junction. Yeah. Yeah. Conflict yep. and then potential contamination of the triple SI and water supply if the pumping station were to break. Okay. Okay then. Yeah. I think it might be CS eleven. Okay. All right, Rob, yeah. Sorry, Chairman, we've got um, Gordon Sutherland wanting to speak again. Yes, go on, Gordon. Thank you, Chair. Just um, we might want to have a look at CS11, which deals with environmental matters and the core strategy. There might be something you can hang your hat on there. Yes, OK. OK, then. So we've had a proposal in a second to refuse the application. Um, at this point, Sammy will do the roll call and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Bird? Councillor Bird? You need to just unmute Councillor Bird. Sorry, four. Councillor Fairhead? Four. Councillor Flaxman Taylor? Four. Councillor Freeman? Refuse. Um, is that for refusal, Councillor no, Freeman, it, it, or against? I'm against, yeah. For you're against, refusal, yeah. you're for refusal. Yeah. So you're for this, this 
recommendation that which is for refusal yes thank you <laughs> councillor hammond for councillor lawn obviously you joined just after the um, officer had started and we lost you a couple of times during and i think we've lost you again so um councillor lawn therefore cannot vote on this item councillor mogford uh, against Against refusal? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm for, sorry, I'm for refusal. For refusal, thank you. Councillor Wainwright? Against. Councillor Williamson? Against. Councillor T. Wright? For. And Councillor B. Wright? For. Okay, Chairman, um, just to confirm that is approved for refusal, contrary to policies CS6 and CS12. And, okay. and, and Pound Lane Junction conflict and potential contamination, which I believe is CS11, as the officer has said. Thanks. Thanks very much, Sammy. Thanks, everybody, uh, for taking part in that one. Um, so we now move to item number four, which is Homestead Main Road, Philby, pages... 27 to 40 of the agenda. That's Rob Tate and Gordon Sutherland doing this, I understand. Gordon? Sorry, Chairman, just before we start, I just want to make sure we've got everybody. I know people were struggling with updates on their computers, so I just want to make sure we've got everybody still with us. I think we've got everybody bar Councillor Lawn. If you're happy to proceed, Chairman, I'll keep yes. trying to get Councillor Lawn on. Yes, Thank over you. to uh, Gordon. Thank you, Chair. Um, what we'll do here is we'll just do a very brief description, then run through some slides to give you some context, have a little bit of uh, further description, and then allow you to ask us some questions. So um, this one is um, an application for two uh, dwellings um, at uh, Land at Homestead Main Road, Philby. Um, this is the... Um, Sorry, Rob, can we go back to the location or have we done location? Ah, here's the location. So it's, it's on the edge um, of, the, of the current settlement. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, I think we show the development boundary in hashed in red. So this is the site and it's the, the area to the, as Rob is indicating here in that parcel of land there. Um, so again, it's a full application for two, de two uh, detached three bed dwellings um, off of main road. Um, and the property is outside of the, the development uh, limits uh, as defined in the 2001 plan. Um, and it, Rob, can you just indicate the, 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 the site? So the homestead is the, okay. The area of the proposed development is, is to, to the west, the area in red. Okay, so we'll, we'll just take you through some slides of, to show you what the, the, the environs are, are like. So here's an aerial showing it in, in relation to uh, the wider village. Again, the 2001 development boundary. This, is, this would be the access, which is an existing access on the western end of the site. So it would be um, coming around the back of the proposed buildings and the buildings would be behind the line of trees that you can see. Okay, moving on. Again, so this is a, a street view with the trees at the front. These trees are the subject of a tree preservation order. Okay, moving on. Again, a further shot of the trees. Uh, property to the east, a view to the east, and a view to the west, and access, the, rack, the access from main road. This is the site, you can see it's, it's um, really kind of an extension of garden land at this point. Um, views, these are the um, views either side from the access point. Uh, looking back towards the group of dwellings within the property, uh, these are the barns, sorry, and this, this is the access off of which the um, dwellings would be served. 
again, more of the site. The, the barns as part of the homestead site, the property. This will be the listed barn. Again, looking back from the existing barns towards the site. The trees again at the front. Again, the trees which are proposed to be retained. I think. Hopefully that gives you a good flavor of, of the site. Okay, so if we just go back to the layout. So, um, say it's for two three bed houses um, access taken off of the western end of the property uh, the line of trees fronting the main road uh, the subject of a tree preservation order the design and appearance of the dwellings um, have been amended during the course of the application to try and blend in as far as possible with the uh, properties to the east um, including the size and the and the, uh, the massing of the buildings, um, visibility displays show as, as submitted that uh, plans show that visibility displays can be achieved from the access. There've been two letters of of uh, support for the application, uh, and uh, the parish council objects on the grounds of additional traffic movements outside of the that the site is outside of the. Uh, um, development boundary, 2001 development boundary, and is contrary to the neighborhood plan, uh, which is under uh, development. Uh, as per the previous application, um, the issue here is the principle of development and whether other considerations such as amenity, highway safety, and impact on the adjacent listing building uh, outweigh the principle of development. Uh, in this case, it's considered that improvements made to the design help to reduce the impact of the development. Uh, trees can be retained within the scheme and the proposed access is uh, to the satisfaction of the county surveyor. And as such, we recommend approval uh, as per section 10 of the report. Chair. Thank you, uh, Gordon, for that uh, report. Um, any councillors got any technical questions for the planning officer, please? Councillor Wright, T Wright, sorry. Tony Wright. Thanks yeah, thanks very much, uh, Chairman. Just a, just a very, very quick one. I think I, I know the answer to this one already from the plans, but it does mention in the report this, uh, this thorny subject of grade one agricultural land. This actually isn't on farmland. This is on the, uh, the grass verge, which is planted, uh, not on the agricultural land itself. The whole farm is the, the grade one, isn't it? Is that correct? That would, that would be my understanding, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, please? No further hands raised, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, I understand there is no applicant to speak um, and no objectors. That's correct, Sammy? That's correct, Chairman. Yep. Um, and there's no, yeah, sorry. and there's no, sorry, no parish council representatives? No, Chairman. Okay, so at this point then, um, I call Councillor Adrian Thompson, Ward Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank um, you. Just to, just to clarify, a uh, few points to my fellow councillor, Trevor Wainwright. Uh, between 2015 and 2019, we had 54 completions in Philby, including 10 affordable housing. So we take our first fair share, partner. And it does say in the um, um, development plan that due to the number of significant complete completions and planning permissions and allowances in secondary villages, no further sites are looked for in Philby. It actually quite clearly says that in there, which we fully back. So hence that's why this is out of the development plan again. Uh, Tony Wright is perfectly correct in saying it is in actually the, the person's garden rather than on grade one agricultural land. We, have, we do have our concerns on that. When you look at the slide that uh, will come up, there's a number of buildings at the back, a barn and outbuildings, et cetera, which uh, could, could be converted. We would fully back conversion. So you could end up with eight or nine properties coming out on this one drive. Looking ahead, we are slightly concerned about that. But in terms of, yes, it is outside the structure plan, but it's in, in the person's garden. Traffic you already heard about is not quite to the detrimental effect that Pound Lane and Green Lane will have on Philby. 
uh, to a local parish council, and I do object, uh, there are pluses for this. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Any technical questions for the ward councillor, please? Councillor T. Wright. Councillor Tony Wright. Sorry, Sorry I, I hadn't pressed the, the lower the hand down. So <laughs> Thank okay. You. Thanks. Uh, councillor Wainwright. Here we go. Just muted, Councillor Wainwright. Councillor, Councillor, what? Councillor Wainwright, I hope this is a technical question yes, for the no, ward councillor. No, it isn't. I just no, want to come back. No, 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 thank you. I want to come back on a no, comment that Adrian Thompson no, said. No, thank I you. I don't need to be... No, thank you. Councillor Wainwright, you have been muted. That is not a technical question. Okay? Nobody can hear you anyway. <laughs> Councillor um, Wainwright, that's not a technical question. Thank you. Councillor Hammond. Councillor Hammond. Yeah, sorry, Chair. I was just going to say move to approve, but I was I jumped the gun. Is anybody wish to speak in the debate? Second, Councillor Hammond's proposal. Okay, we've got a proposer and a second to approve. Okay, Sammy will now do the roll call. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Bird? Four. Councillor Fairhead? Four. Councillor Flaxman Taylor? Four. Councillor Freeman? Four. Councillor Hammond? Four. Councillor Lawn, I don't think, was able to join us again. Councillor Mogford? Four. Councillor Wainwright. Four. Councillor Williamson. Four. Councillor T. Wright. Four. And Councillor B. Wright. Four. Thank you, Chairman. That is approved. Thank you, everybody, for that. And uh, thank you, Councillor Thompson, for your input on that as well. Thank you. Um, so we now move to item number five, um, which is Butt Lane, Dovedale. Um, Rear of 41 at 61 on the agenda. Uh, that's with uh, Rob Tate and uh, Gordon, I understand. Yeah, and I am waiting for somebody to join the meeting for this item. Um, it's the ward councillor. We, we can start the meeting, but I'll just let you know that he's he's joined. Oh, yep. We can start the item, not the meeting. The item, yep. thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, uh, Gordon, Rob. Yep. Um, thank you again, Chair. We're, we're double thank teaming. Um, so the application is an outline application at land rear of Dovedale, Butt Lane, Burr Castle. Um, it's outlined for seven dwellings on 1.2 acres. Uh, it's for permission in principle and for the means of access. So this is an indicative layout that you're seeing on the screen right now. It's really just the point of access and uh, the principle of seven dwellings on the site. Um, if granted uh, appearance scale, layout and landscaping would require a further approval of reserve matters. Uh, so Rob is going to take you through again some slides to give you some context for the site. So this is an aerial uh, with the site uh, off of, uh, do you want to show the um, dovedale? That's it. Okay. Um, sorry, go back to the, so this is the property that would be demolished, giving access into land to the rear. So this is the land to the rear. Okay, okay, now we'll show you around the site. So this is the existing entrance to Dovedale. Dovedale itself with the track down the side. Another of the front elevation with, the, with trees which we'll be referring to as we go, go forward. And these trees have been um, served with a, a TPO, a tree preservation order. Okay. Looking up the side of Dovedale, uh, continuing up and up <laughs> and up. And then we're getting to the land to the rear now. So you can see uh, the space in which development would take place. And then this is Butt Lane, looking in each direction 
So you can see you've got pretty clear views in each direction. And then back to the, back to the layout. Um, yeah, what we're showing you here, because the, the trees, tree, I think trees will be a main issue, is um, the tree preservation order was served on the trees on the property. And you can see outlined on here, um, horse chestnut, Corsican pine, pine, et cetera, Scots pine. T26, 25, and 24 are obviously uh, in line with the, the pro proposed access. Uh, T25 is of a type class C, I think as referred to in the Arboriculturalist report, that um, would be uh, acceptable for removal, whereas T24 and 26, uh, their removal are objected to by the, um, the council's arborist and a method statement is shown uh, accompanying the uh, application to show how um, T24 and 26 could be retained by overlaying what's called overlaying the rooted area. So Rob's moving on to show this area that's cross hatched in purple, um, uh, overlaying the rooted area with what's described as a cellular, cellular confinement system. Um, which would protect the trees. Um, rep so if we go back to the layout plan, uh, representations from the parish and the public um, mainly concern the adequacy of the local roads and the impact on local services. Also considering uh, advising um, that the, the site is outside the development boundary. Um, the indicative layout plan shows that visibility displays can be achieved uh, from the proposed access and the county surveyor has raised no objection subject to providing them. Um, as per the previous application that the issue again is the principle of development and whether considerations such as amenity and highway safety outweigh the principle, that principle. In this case, it's considered that the amenity of adjoining properties and highway safety can be maintained and approval is recommended as set out in paragraph 10.2 of the report, um, which includes that a section 106 be entered into to secure um, the um, uh, highway improvements. Um, with that, happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you, Gordon. Um, any councillors got any technical questions for the senior planning officer, please? I mean, if I could just ask Gordon to just stop sharing his screen, please. Or oh, Rob. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no technical questions, Chairman. Oh, sorry, Councillor T. Wright. Sorry. Me again, Chair. Sorry. sorry to be a bit of a nuisance. Um, no, Chairman, on, on page on page fifty-eight, uh, nine point two seven. It says this application seeks to establish the principle of a development of 30 dwellings. Could they also just explain, obviously this is an application for seven. Yeah. Is there going to be more coming up on, on this particular piece of land? No, I think um, that's a carry forward from when the application was originally submitted. It was a larger site for a larger number of dwellings. And during the course of the application, it has been reduced down to a much smaller site for outline for seven. So that is really a typo, I think, within the committee report. So just to come back on that. I, I did read the report where it had been reduced from 1.8 uh, hectares down to point. I think it was. So sometime in the future, once this has gone through, there could be another application come forward for this. Uh, there could always be applications in the future, um, but um, we're dealing with this one on its merits. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other technical questions for the planning officer, please? No further questions, Chairman. Okay then, thank you. So at this point we move to the applicant's agent, uh, Mr. Ian Garrett. Mr. Garrett. Hello, sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Garrett, you have three minutes. Yeah, I'm good. Good evening. Uh, firstly, I'd like to clarify the position of the application changes. The application has been under consideration by plan officers since the registration on the 27th of September 2018. This was for only nine dwellings, including means of access, exactly 25 months prior to this meeting. 
The changes in numbers to 30 from the original application submissions have been at the behest of the planning officers, with the current seven dwellings being the latest suggested and supportable scheme from planning policy manager and officers. Secondly, the land has been in one family for the last 100 years. The whole site consists of 0.5 hectares of grade three and four agricultural land, which is too small to economically viable. Unlike large areas of grade one land in the villages to the north of Great Yarmouth and to the south of Bradwell and Galston, noting that there is an access and has been an access off butt lane for commercial use since 1920, the market garden and a caravan club site. We point out that many of the objections raised in the agenda before you relate to the nine and 30 dwelling schemes, which, are being, which is not being considered by you today, many being historically or factually incorrect. We have worked tirelessly with the plan officers to, to achieve a well-balanced scheme for seven dwellings and layout with a replacement tree planting in line with the arborist recommendation of 12 replacement Corsican and Scots pine, heavy standard trees along with safe access from that up lane to the site. Due to Norfolk uh, County Council Highways vision display requirements, the removal of two pine trees, T24 and 26, located at the front of the site. This would however be more than compensated as discussed along with the comprehensive tree planting scheme as suggested on the submitted plans and the agenda item. Note there are 10 TPO trees which will be retained on the site surrounding. Uh, it would be, should be noted that the TPO mentioned has yet to be finalised following the landowner and applicant. Objective. 30 seconds remaining, Mr Garrett, thank you. We would point out that this site offers an important opportunity for the council to achieve a selection of high quality homes with an easy reach of amenities within the area and transport hubs for wider countrywide travel. The site is within easy reach of Gapton Hall and Beacon Park, which were ever developing commercial development sites. The site is an important addition to the housing requirements being sought by Great Yarmouth Borough Council. The site that can support the current shortfall in the five-year housing supply and needs of the district. Site works can start within 12 months of approval today, as the applicant is in a position to make a start on this important development for the borough. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Um, any councillors got any um, technical questions for Mr. Garrett, please? No hands raised, Chairman. Oh, sorry, sorry, Councillor Williamson. I was a bit ahead of the schedule there. Councillor Williamson. Sorry, I, just, I just put it up at the last moment, sorry about that. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I just wonder if Mr Garrett can explain how the utilities will be taken on the site, i.e. Uh, sewage, foul water drainage, and also the main water supply from Butt Lane, if it's going to have to avoid the roots of the trees. Um, there, there, are space, there are spaces to the north and the south, which would be beyond the tree roads. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No further questions, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Garrett, for your time and input. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so at this point we move to... Um, Mr. Saunders, who is a supporter for the application. Mr. Peter Saunders. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Right. Mr. Saunders, um, you have three minutes and I'll let you know when you've got 30 seconds remaining. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Unlike some recent developments in Borough Castle, this application at Dovedale is a backland site which will not change the look or character of the village. In addition to the amenities of Borough Castle, this site being situated at the southern end of the village is only a short walk from Moreland's Primary School and all the amenities that Belton has to offer. Plus a cycle lane to Galston High Schools, Beacon Park and a direct bus route to Norwich. The scheme is similar to the eight properties built on Oakland's Drive a few years ago, 
and the four properties just approved by delegated decision at the post office on Butt Lane. I think the members should look beyond the two TPO pine trees at the entrance and consider the application on its merits as a small, well-located quality development of seven dwellings and approve it in accordance with section 9.35 in the officer's report. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Mr. Saunders. Any councillors got any technical questions for Mr. Saunders at all? Uh, no hands raised, Chairman, but I think the monitoring officer would just like to say something, please. Caroline? Uh, just wishing to clarify, I believe that Mr. Saunders is actually the uh, land owner, if he could confirm, although he's not the applicant, which is why he has been able to speak as a supporter, but we should con uh, confirm that he is the uh, land owner and would possibly, he can confirm or deny stand to benefit from the application. Thank you. Yes, I, I am a I am a joint land owner the, of the land. Um, so obviously, yes, I, I, I would gain from it. But I was um, told that I could just um, uh, say something as a supporter. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. OK, thank you. Um, thanks for your um, input, Mr. Saunders. Um, I don't believe we've got any objectors, uh, Sammy. No, Chairman. No? Okay, so we now move to our parish council representatives. We have a Mr. Brian Swan. Uh, Mr. Swan. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Chairman. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yep. Yep, we can. Thank you. Um, this site is outside the Barrow Wide Development Area and is on a plot behind existing properties and as such as background development. Butt Lane itself is not wide enough at this point for eight properties used on an access road. That's the seven plus the replacement that's proposed later for Dovedale. There are regular residence cars parked opposite the proposed entrance. The road itself carries a lot of heavy commercial and holiday vehicles with narrow footpaths, which are a narrow footpath which is on one side of the road only. The current bus stop is at this very same point on the road. And although no road markings are there for the bus stop, vehicle, the vehicles will actually park directly up to it, if not over the proposed splay area. There are concerns, obviously, about visibility and, as I said, the width of the road. You have already mentioned the TPO this summer, and we are concerned that the, that the trees do remain. I know there is discussion about, as you've just said, about coverage, but will that be suitable for such large trees? There's also a potential issue with headlamp light streaming into the property opposite from the new roadway. Regarding sewage issues, which are old chestnut of yours, in September of this year, there was yet another issue with the local sewage capacity, which resulted in raw sewage flowing onto paddocks in the nearby Porter's Loop due to lack of overall capacity in the village, I assume. This is an issue the site is near to the Broads Authority land which is another concern on that point. Overall, the application could lead to further applications later, both on land owned and this, by this uh, person and other, develop, and other land on the same side of Butt Lane. This is, if, if approved, will be setting a major precedent for the west side of Butt Lane, which is, as I say, very near to the Broads Authority land. Borough Castle Parish Council is 100% against this application. There are, as you said, residents' objections. And you note that, or you state that some came in for earlier uh, parts of the plan when there were up to 30 properties proposed. I feel that all objections should be taken into account because although people perhaps have not resubmitted, they still have views about any development whatsoever on this land. 30 seconds remaining, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I would ask that you pl please refuse this application. We have enough traffic and business and uh, uh, trade on Butt Lane already. Regarding quickly the cycle track, there is a considerable way to reach the cycle track. 
It's not an easy access to get there. There are, there's a lack of footpaths between Belton and Borough Castle. So I think access to the track itself is a problem. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swan. Any councillors got any questions for Mr. Swan from the Parish Council, please? No hands raised, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Swan, for your time and your input. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. So at this point, um, I now move to ask uh, Councillor Carl Smith, the County Councillor, um, for that area. Councillor Smith. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'd just like to say a few words on this application. As County Councillor, um, I'm very concerned that obviously, as we know, that there was an application to start with for 30 uh, houses on this development. It then went down to nine, it's down to seven. Uh, I'm worried that this will lead to an increase in development around that area. In other words, there will be plans come in. And I believe once a precedent is set, it will be very hard to try and stop any more development around there. As the parish chairman has said, the, the road along Butt Lane is really uh, not suitable, I don't think, for any more development along there. It is a well-used road. We have a gravel pit along there. We have three holiday parks. Uh, we have a, a fort at the end, an ancient monument. And I believe that, uh, as he also says, it is out of the development plan. And I would like to see this application refused. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Any, any um, technical questions or anything they want to ask the County Councillor? No hands raised, Chairman. Councillor Wright, if you wanted to stay in the same screen, as I know there's updates being done, that's, that's fine. I can see that you're both there, so that's fine. But there's no further questions, Chairman. OK, uh, thanks. Uh, Councillor Carl Smith, thank you. Oh, sorry, Chairman, we've got a hand raised from Councillor sorry? Wainwright. Council I don't know whether Councillor Wainwright had a question to Councillor Smith. Councillor Wainwright? You're muted. Yes, no, it was just a, it was a sort of a technical question, really. Um, uh, Councillor Smith mentioned a 30 uh, um, house application. But as far as I know, there's never been an application put in for 30 houses. It was talked about, as, um, as the planning officer said, and it was discussed, I believe, with um, planning officials some years ago. But as far as I know, there's never, ever been a, a planning application in for 30 houses. And, you know, this particular application should be treated on its merits. Um, any application, any anywhere in the borough, if there's land, people can come at a future date to put in another one, but they're all treated individually on their own merits. So I just want to clarify that there was not an application for 30 that came in, because according to the papers, there wasn't. OK. Uh, Gordon, do you just want to come in here, Gordon? Yep, sure, Chair. Um, Yes, the application has been amended since it was originally submitted. It was for a larger site, but technically that is um, okay in terms of planning applications. So long as things are getting smaller, we can deal with them. But if they get bigger, we have to start again and get a new application. So this one originally came in as a larger site for a larger number of dwellings. But in discussions, as we are obliged to do during the course of applications, we have to engage with the and demonstrate that we're engaging with the applicant. Um, it, they were advised to reduce the size of the site in order that it could then be um, deemed sustainable in terms of its, its size and its relationship to the re remainder of the, uh, the settlement. And that's how it's progressed. Yes, thank you, thank thank you, you very Gordon. much for that. That, that, was you, actually, that actually was my point that it, you know, although an application had been submitted, obviously in discussions with the planners, it's been reduced down to seven. Uh, to down to nine, then down to seven. It's never actually come to a planning committee for a decision. You know, this is the first time it's come. I just wanted okay. to make that point. Thank you. Um, so we now move to um, the debate and the decision. Um, it's over to the councillors what they think. Sorry, Chairman, I was muted. Councillor Williamson. Councillor Williamson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I, I would support this uh, reduced uh, application for this site uh, in particular, but there's one issue I've raised, and I, I hope Councillor Smith is still on the line and listening. 
the issue is actually the footpath through the Belton. And I think that this applies to any application which goes on in that part of Borough Castle. And the footpath is a very, very football footpath with no crossing at the top of uh, the road to go to the schools or get to the cycle path. So that needs addressing long term. I just raise as an issue, but this I would support this particular application. Thank you, Councillor Williamson. Um, Councillor Wainwright. Yes, Councillor Wainwright. Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I just want to support what Bernard Williams uh, just said. I mean, I would support this application. I mean, it's only a development in principle for seven properties, which has been vastly scaled down. But when I was a county councillor for that particular area back in, I think it was 2004, we actually then tried to get footpaths um, up, upgraded by Norfolk County Council without any success at all. And we're still waiting on those. But I think this is a development that... Um, should stand on its own merits. I mean, it's only for seven. Um, it's, it's quite a large um, area. And to be honest, like I've said all along, we do need houses in, in our villages. And I think this is, a, as I say, it's the, it's, it's the principle of development we're, we're talking about here today. Obviously, um, the, the, all the other matters have got to be come, reserve matters have got to come back to officers, but I would, I would support this application. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak, please? No further hands raised, Chairman. So have we a proposed... The application, Chairman. Sorry. Councillor Williams. Yes, have we a seconder? I'll second that, Mr Chairman. Councillor Okay. Wayne. Sorry, uh, uh, Gordon. <laughs> Karen Gordon. Um, just to be clear, um, as set out on um, Para 935, and the um, applicant's agent referred to this, um, the um, application as submitted is, includes the removal of T24 and T26. However, the arborist, the, arbor, the council arborist was opposed to that. So there is an opportunity for you to, if you are minded, to agree to the removal of those trees at this point or to, um, and, and to replace those trees, um, require the replacement of those trees or um, as per the recommendation, which was to approve and to retain the trees. So you do have that option. Okay, uh, Gordon, uh, what do we think I about that? to approve and retain the trees. Yes. Yes. Are you happy with that, Trevor? Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know what the impact on the seven properties would be to do this. I thought that was all going to come out in the principle of development, but... You know, these are, these are um, as far as I understand, these are soft, are they called soft pines, aren't they? Um, they're ve I would imagine they're very, like very young. Um, I would imagine that they're quite old trees. I mean, I don't know that much about trees, but they must have been there for many, many years. Um, probably if we had another big storm, they'd probably blow down. But, um, uh, you know, I, I don't want this to hinder, the, I don't want this to hinder the seven, develop the seven house development. I, I think they're needed in the village and if some compromise can be come on the trees, replanting, um, I, I think that should be done. So, so Councillor Wainwright, so you're not seconded that on the reasons of retaining the trees? No, I'm seconding it. Um, no, um, no. I'd like to propose, an, I'd like counter propose then that we approve the application and the two pine trees in question, I think it's T24 and T26, are replanted to make sure that the development goes ahead. What does the committee think about that in general? Sorry, I, I, I I'll come back, I... Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, can, Council... can I come back on this, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Councillor Williamson, yes. I, I think, the, I think the, the conditions that they set down, which the tree officers set down, uh, protecting the roots, would actually allow the development of the seven houses, and would allow the development to go ahead while retaining the trees. Yes. I thought that was the middle way through. Yes. They are of a reasonable quality, these trees. They're really large trees, and Scots pines of the age are not often seen in this part of the world. So they're worth retaining. Okay. Um, so Wait, have we... Have I'm, we I'm happy to, sorry, I'm happy to second that. Um, as long as it doesn't hinder the development, basically. And quite clearly, Councillor Williamson has just said that with this tree, whatever they do to the roots, we're able it to happen. That's, that's fine with me. 
Okay, so we have a proposer and a seconder uh, to approve the application and retract, uh, keep the trees. Um, we're all Sorry. happy with that. Sorry? Can I just clarify, there was an earlier proposal was From Councillor Wayne, no, no, right? I, I, I withdraw on that. I withdraw. Okay. Okay. Okay then. Um, anybody else? Include keeping the trees. Yeah, Go keep on. the trees. Every, anybody else wish to speak on this application? Councillor Hammond, Chairman. Councillor Hammond, you've got your hand yes, raised. Chair. <clears throat> would it would it be possible to ask for the southwest boundary to be lined with trees to stop any future development going on? So, so we, we, we effectively shut out the southwest side completely with trees. Gordon, can that be done permission? as a condition? Uh, well, when we get to reserve matters, landscaping is normally reserve matters. So um, a landscaping scheme would need to be submitted with the application. Um, I think um, it would be a little bit uh, tricky to try and prevent development by planting trees, um, you would then have to um, put a preservation order on them thereafter. Um, I'm not sure that that would be um, an appropriate way to, to deal with it. Um, applications have to be judged on their merits in future. So um, we would be kind of um, prejudging uh, and there may never be any further applications on that site. There may be, but there may not be. Okay, thanks, Gordon. Um, so we have a proposer and a seconder to approve the application and retain the trees. Um, Sammy will now uh, do the roll call. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Anderson. For. Councillor Bird. For. Councillor Fairhead. For. Councillor Flaxman Taylor. For. Councillor Freeman. For. Councillor Hammond. For. Councillor Mogford. Or. Councillor Wainwright. Or. Thank you. Councillor Williamson. Or. Councillor T. Wright. Or. And Councillor B. Wright. Or. Thank you, Chairman. That is approved as per the recommendations. Keep the trees. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, so now we move to item number six, uh, which is the application of 64 Beckles Road, Bradwell, pages 62 to 71. Sammy, Chairman, if I can just, just, yeah, if I can just get Councillor right back into the meeting before the officers start, just bear with you. me two seconds. Yes, we'll just hang on yeah. a second. And um, Councillor Bird is not there. Chairman, I think the computers are doing updates, which we've seen a few councillors leave. So if, if members are minded to, we can hang on, hang on, yeah, just, just to see if we on. can get Councillor Bird back on as well. Yep, yep. Members, that's just something to be mindful of. A lot of you have been receiving a notification that your computer will shut down. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of because we can't, st we can't prevent the shutdown, unfortunately. Can I just say, Sammy, that's why I did mine this morning. <laughs> getting thank the you. Staff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I think we've got Councillor Bird back. Well, you're not going early. Yep, we've got Councillor Bird back as well, Chairman. Okay, then. Yes, yeah, so we move to item number six. Um, 64 Beckles Road, Bradwell, pages 62 to 71. And I believe our senior planning officer, Gordon Sutherland, again. Gordon. Yep. Oops. What have we lost? Are we there? Yep. Do you want me to enlarge it? You got it? Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Sorry, we're, uh, we're double teaming again um, with my able assistant, Rob. Um, so this is a, a minor application for four detached bungalows on land at the rear of 64 Beckles Road. The slide in front of you shows the site edged red, um, and then there's an aerial to try and give you some context on the, the left. 
So um, what you see there is the existing dwelling at 64. Um, it's kind of like a tomahawk shape, the site, um, or, or an ax. Um, the, 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 the dwelling that will be removed has already been demolished is 64 and that's a linear site that comes off of, of um, Beckles Road and then uh, land has been acquired off of nine um, four, sorry three five seven and nine uh, buses loke to um, provide additional land so you can see that you have this linear site and then it opens up to the rear okay so uh, we'll move on to show you um, so, so this is the uh, frontage as existing, um, where you can see that the building has been taken down and shows the plot. Then the, the slide to the right, um, that, sorry, that not the slide, the image to the right is moving into the site. So you can see the linear nature. And then if we go to the next slide, this is the land uh, opens up at the rear. So um, the bottom left-hand corner is when you go towards the back of that would be where one of the bungalows is sited. And then it opens up um, to the north. Uh, all of this land here is the, the you know, the formerly gardens of, um, of Bussey's Loke. So, okay, um, next slide. So this is the layout uh, which shows the access coming off of um, Beckles Road. Um, a, a linear access road coming in, a private drive opening up to the, the four bungalows um, at the rear. Um, so uh, the development consists would consist of two three bed and two four bed bungalows with with single garages and parking spaces off of the private drive uh, with turning head um, and um, if if you moved towards the right, Rob, oh, sorry, go back, <laughs> too fast there, um, a, a, a passing place within the, within the private drive. Um, in 2018, permission was granted for two bungalows um, on the site, which on a smaller site, which didn't include, um, I think, the land rear of number nine. Um, and this has now opened the site up a, a little more to allow for additional space. So two letters of objection have been received, um, considering the proposal to be overdevelopment. Sorry, Rob's just showing you some of the elevations there of the, the house types. That's type A, type B, and there's type C. Um, so they're all um, single story um, bungalows. Um, so as I say, two letters of objection have been received considering the, the uh, proposal to be overdevelopment, uh, concerning potential conflict with existing highway use and the desire to safeguard trees at the, at the entrance. Um, and having said that, probably go back, can we go back to the layout, Rob? Um, so he's, he's got his um, pointer on, uh, a tree down here, which is an oak, which is actually, no, sorry. Um, if we go into number 62, slightly to the south, the oak tree, uh, there's an oak tree in here. And that's the subject of a TPO. Discussions have been had with um, the uh, applicant uh, to safeguard uh, the tree roots during construction. Um, so that has been in conversation with the, uh, the council's arborist. Um, okay, so going on to assessment of the application, the, the, the issues here are ones of, um, it's within the development boundary. Um, so the main issues concern amenity, local character, highway and transport impact. Um, so the principle of, of development and less materials consideration outweigh um, apply. Uh, and with regards to amenity, the proposed dwellings are designed as single story. They have parking and garages and private gardens. Uh, adjoining properties would not be overlooked uh, to maintain future privacy of neighboring properties, um, such as the insertion of dormer windows or roof extensions. A condition can be applied to remove those permitted development rights. Uh, there aren't any significant trees on the site itself and measures have been taken to safeguard the protected tree uh, on the adjoining property. With regards to local character, the area is, a gen is generally a mix of post-war dwellings of single and two stories. 
The dwellings will be set back from Beckles Road and largely screened uh, by the existing dwellings either side. Plots are smaller um, than some of the neighbouring uh, ones, um, uh, but would not be obvious from any public vantage point. With regards to highways and transport impact, as stated um, um, the, in the consultation response from the County Highways Authority, they did uh, have reservations about the scale of the development in relation, especially in relation to the access, um, its location to Crab Lane. However, they're minded, uh, given the existing level of frontage development up and down this section of Beckles Road, um, that there's a reasonable expectation on the part of drivers that there'll be um, uh, slowing, stopping and turning into and out of accesses. Um, and conditions have therefore been recommended to address the siting of the access to maintain it in that position and for the provision of uh, sites blaze um, to, in order to maintain highway safety. Uh, Chair, back to you, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Gordon. Any councillors got any technical questions for the planning officer, please? No questions, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I understand there's nobody from the Parish Council. Hang on a second. <laughs> we have no agent, Chairman. No agent, sorry. <laughs> um, there's no yeah. agent, no objectors. We have no one wishing to speak on this item. Um, nobody Chairman. else. Um, as, over to the councillors to uh, this, uh, debate and decision. Um, I just want to make a couple of points, really, to the planning officer. Um, with regards to the TPO trees, and you say protecting um, those trees, I'm quite passionate about protecting trees, and I work in the construction industry myself. Um, but could there be a condition put on this site that when they are working in close proximity to these trees, that they actually hand dig um, near these trees? Because I've seen on sites that, you know, they've, they've got to do this and that, and as soon as the building inspector disappears in his car, out comes the digger and rip all the roots out and hide it all up before they come back. So could there be a condition put on there if they are in real close proximity to these trees? I've known it on sites where service and their services and everything have to be hand dug um, or, or, or digging out for curves or foundations because it's very important with, it, with them TPO trees um, and a bit of a loophole. So perhaps we could put a condition making that perfectly clear. Uh, yes, Chair, I think under on section 10.1, it does say approve with conditions requiring approval prior to commencement um, of the details of construction and surface of the access. Um, and uh, the method statement for root protection of trees along the southern boundary. Okay, and, and just one more point. I mean, that would that would be nice sometimes on these applications. And I said it before that somebody from highways will actually come along and actually speak regarding these applications because I, I feel quite horrified with this application. It's not in my ward. Um, it's just the other side of the boundary of my ward. But this is right at the point where an elderly lady was killed only about two years ago, you know, and with the, the development at the Arches pub, I'm just mystified how they can say they have no objections to this development. That's just my points. Anybody else? Councillor Williamson, Chairman. Councillor Williamson. Yes, I would support that comment, um, Chairman, about hand digging, etc. I take on board the uh, officer's comments, and also, um, without having permitted development rights, I think we've made uh, a very good site to develop. I would support this. I move the uh, application. Thank you. Any, uh, anybody else wish to speak as well? No further hands, Chairman. We have a proposal to uh, approve the application. Have we a seconder, please? I haven't got any hands raised, Chairman. What happened now, Caroline? So in the sorry, in the absence of a seconder. Well, we can't 
but the debate proceed. members wish to continue the, the debate until the conclusion is reached. Can I, can I um, sorry, Mr. Chairman, could I recommend refusal on the grounds of overdevelopment? And you're quite absolutely right. A lady was killed there two years ago, just on that corner. Yeah. You've got the development at the Arches pub, which, uh, as far as I know, is still empty, basically. Um, there's a lot of backland development going down Crab Lane. Um, and, you, you know, if, if this was in somewhere like Philby, it would be refused. Um, but as I say, this is backland development. It's over. It's over development, and um, I would recommend refusal. I mean, I'm not against maybe scaling down to two, um, but obviously, I don't think that um, the number we're talking about, which is four now, five, whatever it is, four. Um, I think it's over development. Okay, Councillor Warren, have we got a seconder for Councillor Wayne Wright's proposal? We've got a hand raised from Councillor Hammond, Chairman. Councillor Hammond. Yes, Chair. I would certainly be happy to second that recommendation from Councillor Wainwright. Okay, thank you. On the grounds of overdevelopment? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. Highway safety? Yeah. 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 Okay, we have a proposer and a seconder to refuse the application. So at this point, Sammy will do the roll call. Thank you, Chairman. So just to confirm, members, you are voting on refusal of the application on the grounds of overdevelopment and highway safety. Councillor Anderson? Four. Councillor Bird? Four. Councillor Fairhead? Four. Councillor Flaxman-Taylor? Four. Councillor Freeman? Four. Councillor Hammond? Four. Councillor Mogford? Four. Councillor Wainwright? Four. Councillor Williamson? Against. Councillor T. Wright? Four. Councillor B. Wright? Four. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that is refused. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, we move to item number seven. Uh, we, no, we have no other business unless Gordon has got anything he needs to tell us um, from Dean or anything. Uh, no, nothing. Um, Dean uh, was not well on Monday and um, um, asked us to take over. And I hope we've done, done, yeah. well, done well by him. Yeah, thank you very much and a brilliant yeah. job. Thank yes, you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, could I just ask that when we get, when we unlive this, the members just stay on. I've just got something I just want to raise, actually, with maybe the officers and yourself, yeah? Yes, yep, no problem. Okay. Yeah, uh, there's no other business, uh, so the meeting is now closed at 18.28. If, uh, if you just stay where you are until uh, the live stream.